friends, welcome to A Wonderful Sheep and welcome to my January reading wrap up video. I'm very excited to talk about the books I read in January as we flip through my very hot pink reading journal. So without further ado, let's get started. Here is my January cover spread. I built this spread around these beautiful Pet Tate stickers that my friend sent me, and I built a little bookshelf based on the color scheme of that cozy winter vibes reading sticker. And although my goal, one of my goals for 2024 was to read less actually and take my time with books and let them, you know, sink in and let me reflect on them, maybe write some reviews. I actually read quite a bit in January. I think it's hard to break the habit of like speed reading through books. So I read 15 books in January and I did a little color coding of the books. Uh, I think I should have put some more forethought into it before I just went in and colored all the audiobooks green. Um, and then I realized that sometimes the green would overlap with the genre. So breaking it down into nonfiction, romance, and fantasy, I did read three nonfiction, which is good. That was also one of my goals for this year. And then the two uh, fiction genres I read were romance and fantasy, which pretty much checks out for my reading tastes. This is a spread I added on a little bit after I set up my reading journal and I just wanted to see how many books I actually read from my loans list. Since I live in Korea, I usually read almost exclusively books in English on my Kindle or via audio, so I don't have physical books. I borrow them from the library, so I have a set time to read them. And so these are all the books I had loaned as of January 11th. Like I said, I thought of this spread later, so as of January 11th, I had all these books checked out, and I only ended up getting to four, five of them from this list, but I obviously read others off the list, or I got off books off the wait list that weren't checked out at the time. But yeah, just kind of interesting to see what books I actually ended up getting to versus the ones I had planned to read. And since I already did a mid-month review for January, I'll speak more about the books that I didn't speak about in that video. And you can watch that video if you want to see how I made some of these spreads. But the first book I finished in January was Love Light Farms by BK Borson. It is the first in the Love Light series. Very cute holiday romance. I had hoped to read it during the Christmas holiday season, but I got off the waitlist a little bit late for that. So it was the first book of the new year. Yeah, I highly recommend this as a holiday romance, but you could read it any time of the year. Stella, the female man character, runs a Christmas tree farm, but it's in trouble. And so she enters this contest where an influencer will come and like cover her small business. And if they win, they get a big cash prize. Except in her application, she said that she ran it with her boyfriend, um, except she doesn't have a boyfriend, so she has to come up with a fake boyfriend, and she turns to, of course, her best friend of many, many years, and we have a fake dating situation going on, we have a best friends to lover situation going on, all the best tropes. It's very sweet. This town and the characters are like very much like a rom-com movie feel where I could just see a lot of these scenes like playing out in my head as if I were watching a, a video, like a romantic comedy movie. Um, and the motley cast of characters from this first book continue on with their own stories in the other books in their series, so that's kind of fun. But yeah, really enjoyed Love Light Farms. It's the perfect, sweet, cozy uh, holiday romance. I already spoke about these two books in the mid-month review, but quickly, This Time Next Year by Sophie Cousins, really loved it. I definitely want to read other books by Sophie Cousins. Um, I've already read The Good Part, and this one was also excellent. This book kind of explores the idea of fate and what could have been, because the two main characters were both born at the same hospital on the same day, like seconds apart from each other. They lead very different lives, and... The female main character, Minnie Cooper's life, could have been very different if she had been the one to be born first and thus win this cash prize that London was giving out to the first baby born that year. So we get to explore that. So we see these two characters. They were, you know, they started off at the same hospital when they were born and then their lives diverge and then they come and meet again together. And Minnie doesn't want to like the male main character, Quinn, but... They are forced together in certain situations and 
love blossoms. It's very sweet. It's very good. The writing is really good. And I just wanted to point out that I use these like blue, like water reflecting paper, background papers, because there's a uh, thing about swimming in the books that is very sweet and I wanted to pay homage to that so that's why this like spread is kind of wacky in terms of color but there's there's meaning behind the blue paper next is Atomic Habits the first nonfiction and self-help book of the year also talked about this in my mid-month review but I will just say yeah it's I think it's worth reading it's got good actionable practical tips about how to break bad habits and make good habits and the only thing you have to do is just actually carry them out. And I just want to point out this cute <laughs> washi tape that I use here of a cat and it holding a gun which is kind of what? But it's also a little funny and it says self battle. Next is Thank You for Sharing by Rachel Runya Katz. This was a book uh, in effort to read more BIPOC authors and books about bike pot characters and more diverse representation. This definitely ticks off all the boxes for that. The two main characters are both Jewish people of color. One is half Korean and Jewish and one is black American and Jewish and they were like friends slash enemies at summer camp when they were kids and then they have a falling out but then they're forced back together, a forced proximity situation when they are adults and sparks rekindle it's very cute there's a fun cast of characters like a found family situation of young adults like banding together and very diverse representation of people of color and also non-binary representation i think <laughs> this one quote i wrote here hear me out kimchi lakes sort of sums up how um there's like this melting pot mixed cultures themes going on in the book so yeah this was very fun Thank you for sharing. And then I already talked about all of us villains in the mid-month review, but I finished the second book in this duology, which I described as Magical Hunger Games. It's about this town where these kids have to fight to the death in a magical tournament. And yes, like Hunger Maids, it is a little bit brutal, a little bit not quite gory. It's young adult, but it is still a little violent since they are, you know, fighting to the death and trying to kill each other with curses and spells. It's a very interesting world. I think you just have to be in the right mood for these vibes. And because I was listening on audio, sometimes my attention would stray and I didn't fully immerse in this magical world. I think it's an interesting book and, an in and it had good world building and some compelling characters and like motivations because all these different characters have different backgrounds and different motivations as they enter the tournament and are interacting with each other making alliances breaking alliances that is really interesting it's just something that i needed to pay more attention to i wasn't able to do that when i was listening on audio but uh an interesting compelling read but also a little bit uh, brutal and violent also spoke about this book in my review but the Aurelian Cycle Trilogy was one of the best trilogies I've read in a while. Loved it so much. Flamefall is the second book in the series. Fireborn is the first. Just amazing. Dragon riding, there's um, politics, there's, you know, a, a love line story, there's intrigue. So good. Really, really loved it. I already spoke about it in the first video, so I will just say highly recommend the Aurelian Cycle Trilogy by Rosaria Munda. If you liked Fourth Ring, read it. If you didn't like Fourth Ring, read it. And these two nonfiction books as well, I also talked about The Courage to be Disliked by Fumitake Koga and Ichiro Kishimi. Like I said, the writing style is kind of something you have to get used to since it's it feels very literally translated, so there is that certain like kind of awkward cadence to the writing, but once you get used to that and get used to the format of like question and answer, there are gems to be retrieved from the book, but sometimes it did get a little bit, um, what's the word, not repetitive, but it's a very slow paced book. But if you stick with it, there are like pearls of wisdom to be gleaned from it. So that is The Courage to be Disliked and Love Yourself Like Your Life Depends on It. Very compelling title. Again, 
I think uh, you have to like extract what you can from the book. For me, I found some of the personal like narrative, sort of like the Dear Diary type of writing, a little distracting, but there are very good um, meditation methods and the mental loop and certain practices he recommends to help, you know, banish this like inner self-critic and like to like break the cycle of like constantly despising or criticizing yourself and trying to embrace and love yourself. And I put this random mirror here because there is something called the mirror method in the book where you like go up to a mirror really close where you can only see your eyes and you just look yourself in the eye and you repeat to yourself, I love myself. So two more nonfiction books. Next up is In the Weeds and Mixed Signals, books two and three in the Love Light series. Just following along with the cute uh, romantic comedy, small town romance feels from the first book. Of the three, I think I liked In the Weeds the best. I really liked the mailman character, Beckett. He's like your classic grumpy, like tough on the outside, um, but has a soft core on the inside. And the way this spread came about was there is like a bouquet of flowers covering the characters' faces on the book cover. So I wanted to recreate that. But instead of just sticking with flowers, I uh, put in the little memos, little quotes I'd written down as I was listening to this book on audio. Um, I just like jot them down on the paper underneath uh, my journal. I have like a piece of paper on my desk where I jot down things as I'm listening to it or I also like, you know, wipe off markers or swatch colors as I'm journaling. So I just cut them out literally as is and stuck them in the bouquet, like red bell peppers, pink earmuffs. Um, did you find you're happy today? and the phone tree <laughs> and there's four kittens in the bouquet because there's some stray cats that they've adopted that Beckett has adopted that are really cute I I just liked I liked Beckett I think I just liked his character and his character arc and so by the time I got to mix signals I think I was um, not tired of but I think I'd gotten enough of like my romantic comedy fill from the first two books so I was a little impatient with mixed signals, but it's just the same vein as the first two. Um, in mixed signals, they're also fake dating, forced romance, I guess. Um, they like have a, they enter into a relationship, an arrangement, literally an arrangement where they like decide to fake date each other so that um, Layla can see what it's like to date someone who's not a total jerk. And Caleb gets to practice his dating because he's always like too much, too intense. But of course, um, what starts out as a fake arrangement blossoms into real feelings. And yeah, I like the characters, like the whole cast of characters in this town. It, Like I said, it's very much a romantic comedy. Like you can really visualize... <laughs> the like quirky characters, um, supporting characters in this world. So that is fun. But like I said, I think I was just, I had my fill of romantic comedy by, I, by the time I got to the third book. And then we have Fury Song, book three of the Aurelian Cycle. I don't know what to say about these books without giving away spoilers, other than just, I really enjoyed them. I really, really, really like this series a lot. I, I would reread the series from the beginning again um, just to check for things I missed from the first um, run through and it's like at, I mean it's about dragon riders but there's so much more to that there's so many other levels and layers of the political intrigue and philosophy and political philosophy and ethics and but also like battles like military strategy and yeah it makes you think about like ethics and government and like what is equal and fair and what like what is what would you do when you have to choose between the better of two evils and uh fury song expands the world we'll refer back to that map i drew for book two where book one is isolated to mostly the the main island of Calypolis, and then 
flame fall expands out into new pythos so the you get to see the points of view of the both sides and you're like who do i root for you can see the humanity in both sides and also the baddies um the evil people in both sides and then book three expands even further into this map and you see people envoys and characters from another empire and you see how these like different kingdoms uh, interact with each other a little more and I would be so happy to read a spin-off about the other characters and like learn more about the other dragon types in the other kingdoms but I think it ends with the trilogy unfortunately so that was Fury Song just yeah Aurelian Cycle really liked really liked this series and another thing is I really liked both the female main character Annie but Lee the male main character is also really excellent like I think I'm not I don't love like a morally gray male main character. I don't want a man who will like burn down the world for you. I want a man who will stand by your side and build up a world with you. And that is Lee. <laughs> that is very much Lee in this book. And next we have Dragonbound by Thea Harrison. This is a shape-shifting book which I had never read before and I have another goal is to read more books about dragons this year so that f check the box of that but literally the main male character is a dragon it's not about dragon riding he is a dragon and Pia the female main character is human but with mysterious origin and past and she's blackmailed into stealing something from Dragos who most of the time is in a human form he can turn into a dragon, but in his human form, he's like an ultra billionaire living in a high rise in New York City, and she steals a penny from him. He finds out he's furious. He tracks her down. She's running for her life because she knows he's one of the most powerful beings in the world. Uh, but he was planning to find her and kill her, but there's something special about her, and they're forced together, and he ends up not killing her, and love ensues. Uh, <laughs> And the dialogue is pretty funny in this book. It's a very steamy book, so that like you will suddenly, all of a sudden, they'll be like, "Whoa, steamy scene out of nowhere." But there's, I don't know what how to describe it, like tongue in cheek, but the banter is kind of funny between the two of them. Um, like this, yes, I know he said impatient. I am going to rend you from limb to limb someday when I feel like it. In the meantime, you will not faint. You will not get. You will get warm, and you will stop being distressed. He is morally gray because he's not human and he's not bound to the confines of human morality. And like literally he says at one point, I used to eat people, you know. <laughs> so I think that sort of sums up the book. It's pretty funny. It's very steamy and it's the first of the Elder Races series. So there's other magical races like elves and fairies in this world. And so I think the rest of the series covers those shapeshifters. I don't know if I'll continue with this series, but this was a pretty fun first book. And then the last two books are the Emily Wilde's uh, books, which I really, really enjoyed. Again, I don't know how to speak about books without spoiling them, other than Emily Wilde is a scientist, she studies fairies, and so the books are set like a journal. They're, they read like a, her journal where she's writing her observations as she tracks down and observes fairies and other like mystical creatures. I love the setting of these books. They're very atmospheric. You can really like feel like you're in like the northern Europe, like a very isolated t uh, town on the borderlands of human and fairy lands. And same for the second book where it's set in the Alps and it's very much you can feel like this is an area where humans and fairy like sort of intermingle. And the dialogue between the main characters is excellent. They have excellent banter. It makes me chuckle. This book made me chuckle a lot. And I was just like, yeah, I said grinning from ear to ear. For this spread, I wrote some words I had to look up since I didn't know what they were. And yeah, I love this world. I will definitely be reading the third book in this series, which I don't know what's coming out, but I'm looking forward to it. And that is it for the books I read in January. I am excited to continue with some of the series I started and hopefully find some new books in February. We'll look through the 
the yearly spreads of my journal. So we did finish three books about dragons this year already. So I've met my goal, but I'll probably continue to try to fill up this page. Added some to my series page, Love Light Farms and Emily Wilde, and I did finish the Aurelian Cycle. This TBR I turned into a recommendations page, so anytime someone recommends me a book, I'll add it here and note who recommended it to me because I often forget and I'd like to have that track somewhere. My goals page, hopefully I will be starting a buddy read soon and be reading more in Korean, but have started on my other two goals of nonfiction and BIPOC authors. The year at a glance page and I have added to my Books are Magic page where I add a sticker for every book I read. So this spread is going to fill up pretty quick, I think. But yeah, that is it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what books you enjoyed in January. Um, let me know if any of these books pique your interest. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.